Hi guys, welcome to another Barb Stamps video. This video is the kickoff video to my Create Where You Are October Kit to Go. Um, it's featuring the Poinsettia Petals Bundle and other things in the Poinsettia Place Suite. Um, my kits to go every month are a kit of products that you will use to create the cards um, in the class. Uh, this card that I'm going to show you today is one of the cards that you will make in the class. You will actually make two of them. And um, you'll make eight cards total, four cards, two of each design. Uh, so you'll make two of these and then you'll make six other cards and those are exclusive to the class and I don't show them anywhere else. So the kit to go is $45 and that includes the cardstock pieces for you to make the eight cards plus envelopes. Plus you will receive a half a package of the Poinsettia Place Designer Series paper. So you'll have these patterns here in your kit. You also get a half a pack of the uh, Plush Point Setia Designer Series paper, and that is this paper that has these gorgeous velvet accents. And you'll notice on some of these pieces, uh, there are dies in this particular uh, set of dies in the bundle that will cut out um, these large flowers. The dies will also cut out these little sprigs, and then of course these leaves, so that's pretty cool. You also will receive two sheets of our uh, gold foil, and all the papers will be cut to six by six. You will also receive a half a pack of our beaded pearl accents, which we are going to be using on the sample card today. You'll get a half a roll of our silver metallic edged ribbon and a half a roll of the red uh, sheer ribbon. Um, and then I think I said you get the envelopes also. So that's included in your kit for the $45. Now, if you want to add the Poinsettia Petals bundle to your kit, if you don't have these already, you can do that for an extra $65. So the total for the kit and the bundle would be $110. Um, if you do want that option, I do have a form linked in this video below that you can fill out and I can send you a PayPal invoice. Otherwise, if you just want the kit, the link to the PayPal is right below in the video. So let me talk a little bit about the bundle. So the bundle is a set of 18 stamps. Uh, these are our uh, pho photopolymer stamps. And then the poinsettia, poinsettia dies is a set of uh, 18 different dies. And I do have some of those things cut out for you. So you'll notice in the stamp set, there are these four uh, poinsettia pieces. So you have the full poinsettia here that you can crop out. And then there are three singles. So we have this one, this one, and this one these three here and then this little guy has a little filler piece as you can see I've stamped it there and then there's a little tiny middle piece here that I did stamp um, in the so saffron and so you can layer these to create a full uh, poinsettia you just layer those together you can fluff up the petals if you want um, the die set also includes um, a dies to cut out these leaves and some um, the other dies well let me just pull them out and kind of show you I feel like I'm stumbling over my words because I'm trying to describe something that I could actually just show you rather than stumble over my words and speak it. So we have the large leaf and the small leaf. So as you can see, you can stamp those images and their center pieces and then crop them out. You can also just take a piece of cardstock and crop out a leaf. But if you want the detail of the veins, you need to add the little detail piece uh, to the center of the leaves before you cut it out. Whoops, is that upside down? Or maybe that one goes in here. I might have left the other one on my stamp and cut and emboss table. So anyways, what I would do is I would take some washi tape and I would connect these two things together. I would run them through in one pass and get the leaf with the veins on it. You can also do that with the uh, poinsettia petals. As you can see, I do have these two dies taped together. And then when I run it through my stamp and cut and emboss machine, I get this nice uh, poinsettia petal leaf with the detail veins already in it. So you can cut out uh, the different sizes of these and make your full poinsettias with that too. So that's really cool. There's also a die for this little uh, pine bow, I guess you would call it. There is a die for this little spriggy guy here and he also has some center pieces or centers that we will use in the card that I'm gonna make for you today. We have some of these little tiny uh, poinsettias that I actually did not cut out. Although I can show you a card so this card here shows two of those small poinsettias uh, cropped out. Then we have these two little uh, middles, flower middles. And here's one of them on this card. This is the open one. And then here they are layered together on this card. And on this card, you can also see where I did cut out uh, some of that super fun plush poinsettia vellum paper. 
So let me get the supplies for the card and we'll get started on making it. So I have a Whisper White thick card base. That's our thick, bleh, thick Whisper White, eight and a half by five and a half. Here's a piece of that amazing um, vellum paper, the plush point setia paper, four by five and a quarter. I have a circle die cut here. This is with our stitched shapes set of dies. This is the largest circle. I also have a piece of watercolor paper, our Fluid 100 watercolor paper. Here it is for those of you that want to see what it looks like. And then I have some other pieces here just because they're done and we, we're going to do some watercoloring and we don't want to wait for it to dry. So I've already done some a little ahead of the scenes. And then I have some of this fun metallic, what is this actually called? Metallic mesh ribbon. This is so fun. It's very thin. Um, it can be used on any type of card. I've seen it on Halloween cards. I've seen it on wedding cards. I'm going to use it on a Christmas card. Um, it's just one of those things that you would look at in the catalog and go, I don't know what the heck I would do with that. But honestly, I've seen it used a lot of different ways. And so we're going to use it on this. Oh, what else do we have? We have our water painters. We need the large background water brush. <coughs> Excuse me. And some other things. But we're going to start with the watercoloring here. So I've got some balmy blue ink and I'm going to squeeze that together. Thank you, Bonnie and Veronica. They said I have beautiful cards. I appreciate that very much. So I have my large water brush here. I need a rag. So here's a really old dish towel. I think my mom gave me this dish towel a hundred years ago and it's old and it's ratty, but boy, is it absorbent and I love using it for watercoloring. So, oh my, I barely have any water in here. So hopefully it's enough. So we're going to squeeze some water, just squeeze the pen where it says push. And then the water is going to kind of filter down through and into the brush right there. And we are going to add some water to the lid here. Or maybe this isn't actually the lid, the tray, I guess, of the um, ink pad and we're going to get some color on the brush. I need a little more water than that. Not quite wet enough. There we go. Okay and I am just literally going to do a background here on this piece of watercolor paper. Um, just really random. Throw it on there wherever. And I actually need it to be a tiny bit darker. So I'm going to grab my ink refill here because I don't want to squeeze my pad again because I don't want to get water all over my pad. So I'm just going to drop some ink refill in there and that way I can get it a little bit darker. There we go. Okay, so I've got it a little bit darker and then I actually want it darker, darker on one, about like one half. And if you don't want to do it like this, you don't have to. And if you want to copy this card, you can do whatever you want. That's the beauty of stamping. We can do anything we want. Okay. So right now it doesn't look very exciting at all. It's just some balmy blue ink on uh, some watercolor paper. And yeah, that's exciting. So I'm going to squeeze the rest of this water out of my brush so that it cleans uh, my bristles. You can see they are stained. Um, I did do a really cool um, fall card here. A few maybe like a month and a half ago. Some of you guys might remember it. It was really cool. And it did stain my brush, but whatever. So I'm going to just take this pad and move it behind me because I don't want to close it up because I don't want that water to get on my pad. And then when I'm done uh, with today's class, I'll just take a Kleenex or paper towel and blot that water out of there and get rid of it. But for right now, we're just going to move that over there. Okay. So normally you would wait for that to dry. Okay. So pretend it's dry. And then what we would do is we would take the poinsettia petals stamp, which is this little guy right here. And I inked it up in Versamark ink. Voila, my Versamark pad is cracked, but you know, it still works. So I'm not going to buy a new one until the pad quits working. I don't care if the lid's broken. So I inked that up in Versamark. I stamped it on my dry piece of cardstock or watercolor paper sprinkled white embossing powder on it and then I heat set it with a heat tool. Pretty standard stuff embossing. I think most of you have probably done that before, heat embossing. Um, so yeah. So then this is the die. This is it in the set of dies, the poinsettia petals dies. And so you would then lay this over the top and because it's watercolor paper and when you get it wet, it does kind of bow a little bit. So it's not super flat. So when I put this uh, through my uh, stamp or yeah, my stamp and emboss machine, I almost forgot what I had. Um, I'm just going to tack it down with some washi tape. And then when I run it through, I get this. 
And so the reason I had it be darker on that one side of the paper is because I wanted a little bit of dimension on the flower. Um, so even though it doesn't look anything special there, I think it does add a little bit of um, excitement, I guess, to my flower by having it be a little bit of a two-tone deal there. Okay, so we're going to put these back in the box. I don't need them anymore. And now I can make two more cards because I've got the supplies all ready. All right, then I also have a little half inch strip of white cardstock. Okay, so now we just kind of need to do some assembly and I do need to stamp one thing, which is that um, image that we just used on the card previously. So I'm gonna clean the green off of it because that's not gonna look very good with our balmy blue that we have going on here. And I'm gonna bring that pad back in and I'm gonna use just the pad here and we're gonna stamp and let's see this is like barely gonna fit so I am barely getting it to fit hmm we're gonna try it again on the other side because we can that looked a little <coughs> oh goodness I've got something in my throat frog isn't that what they say I have a frog in my throat I'm not gonna press this hard oh I probably should have used um one of our <sighs> piercing mats to do that I probably would have gotten a better image so that one looks okay so I'm gonna put the ink pad oh look at that imagine that I touched the ink pad put the ink pad back on the desk so that it does not uh I don't make a mess with that too all right we're gonna put that away I don't need these two sentiments but I do need this so the assembly of this card is very simple we have of course the vellum paper now when you put adhesive on vellum you can usually see it, but here's a little trick that I have found that works pretty good. I'm going to use a piece of sponge that um, I keep in a container. It's a Talenti gelato container. Um, and this way my glue doesn't get super dry. Um, and I'm going to use a little silicone mat and some liquid glue. And I'm just going to squirt some liquid glue. Oh no, this one's almost gone. Well, hopefully we will. Hopefully this will be enough. So what I'm going to do is I am going to uh, tap my sponge into the ink and I'm just going to kind of rub it all over this. And I find that by rubbing the glue all over the paper, you won't see it. Like if I just put some seal, you know, here and there to get it on to my card, it would show through. But if I put glue everywhere, then it's not going to show, I hope. At least it didn't show for me the last time I did this. Okay, so I'm going to center this onto my card base. There we go. And honestly, I don't think, I mean, you guys probably can't tell, but I really can't see that it, at all. So that's a really nice little trick. And then I just throw that back in the container, put the lid on. I'll set this aside. And as soon as this glue dries, I'll just be able, you can probably kind of see, I can just roll that right off. And then I'll just roll it off and throw it into the trash. Okay. So that's a good way to do that. Then we have our fun little vellum piece here and our little flower. Now our little flower, I'm going to use dimensionals. But I'm going to find this one is getting close to being used up. So I'm going to put a few on here because, again, the watercolor paper can kind of curl. Um, just It's just the nature of watercolor paper. It, it is what it is. So if we have a lot of adhesive on there, it'll help it not uh, curl too much. And, of course, I don't have any fingernails to get these little guys off. I know some people use a take your pick tool and I have tried that and that's even worse. I have more trouble with that. All right. So this is going to go right in the middle or middle ish since I messed that up. Can I get that off and try again? Ooh, I might. Ooh, look at that. That was kind of fun. All right. So this we'll try that again. That's better. All right. So then what I thought I would do I actually had this random piece of this ribbon sitting here. And so what I thought I would do with it is I thought that I would roll it. And I can use tape now because my flower is in the way. So I can put a piece of tape right there. And you can see that no one's going to see that the tape is there. And I'm going to tape this side down also. I might need a tiny bit more right there okay and then I can smash this down and then I have this cool kind of 
I don't even know what you call it, but I think it looks pretty cool. So then I'm going to bring in another piece of tape and I think you want to make sure that you don't go outside the flower because you'll, your tape will be seen then. And we don't want that. That's fine. Then we're going to put some dimensionals on and we're going to have to put them on the ribbon. So I'm kind of smashing them down really hard. Not there because there's tape there. But where the ribbon is um, kind of open, I'm kind of smashing it really hard so that it will kind of go through the ribbon and stick to the vellum. Okay. So I'll smash those down pretty hard so they'll catch everything there for us. Okay. And then we're going to add this to the card. Mm, about like that. So that it's in the center. And we'll press down on that, stick it to that velvety stuff. And then our little sentiment piece there, we are going to use the other punch. So I have the other banner uh, punch. And this is a half inch piece of cardstock, so it's going to slide right in. What side did I want? Does that one actually look better? That one actually looks better. Okay. So we're going to put that down so I can see it. So I'm going to slide this in and then I'm going to just crop the end off of that a little tiny bit more. And I always like to look at it just because I want to make sure that it's in there straight. Sometimes it can go cattywampus on you and you don't even realize it. Um, and then you'll get kind of a wonky, a wonky edge there. I don't want a wonky edge. Okay. So I'm just going to kind of put this across to my flower. And I think I'm going to use, now we'll use seal. That'll work. You can hear my family upstairs. Like I said, my daughter's here, so her and my husband are up there chit-chatting. Of course, they're not being the quietest people while I'm trying to do a live Facebook event. But what can I do? All right, I need these little doohickeys again because we're going to put another little doohickey in the middle of this. So we're going to use a couple of glue dots. Oops. Oh, Roy Alia is here. Roy Alia is also on my team. Hello, Roy Alia. Gosh, you guys, I have a lot of my team members watching me tonight. That's awesome. Hello, girls. Welcome. I'm so excited that you're here. Okay, there we go. So we've got that in the center. And isn't that just pretty? This velvety paper just really kind of gives it a sense of elegance. You know what I'm saying? And then this, this fun ribbon, it's just a little bit of sparkle. So I'm just really digging that stuff right now. Okay. So I'll leave that there for a second. And I have to show you, this is a card that I made for a swap. And I made this last month. It was a swap that I did a month ago. And I was going to actually copy it exactly this today for you guys. But I decided that I wanted to use this paper instead of uh, an embossed background. So I wanted to show off this paper a little bit. But it's basically the same. This center, I used some rhinestones. The center here, I used um, the beaded pearls. Of course, here's that same ribbon. I just have it hidden underneath my flower so you can't see the ends. Um, but yeah, there they are. Lots of fun. Okay, we don't need that. We can get rid of that. Ooh, and I'll show you. Look at that. My glue is dry. So look at that. I can literally just rub that off. So I have a big glue booger here. I'll just toss it in the trash. And there's literally no mess doing that method with the sponge. So some of you have probably seen that a million times. Some of you maybe have never seen it before. So if you haven't and you learned a new trick, yay. Okay, our last project, we are going to make a fall card. Let me move these out of the way here. We're going to use this fun uh, plaid tidings paper, and I'm going to use this piece here. This kind of, this piece honestly intimidated me when I was first looking through the pack. I was kind of thinking to myself, whoa, that is, whoa, it's very bright, very loud, and I didn't know if I would ever do anything with it. But today, for some reason, it was speaking to me. So we're going to use it. Okay. So we're going to use Melon Mambo and a piece of that paper, which is right there. I've already cut it. I'll give you the measurements here in a second. Uh, we're going to, so in this paper, in my opinion, is Melon Mambo, uh, Bumblebee, and Blackberry Bliss. Okay. So there's a piece of Blackberry Bliss. There's a white, a Blackberry and we're using the Love of Leaves bundle. 
And this bundle is very similar to the Snowflake or to the Poinsettia bundle in that you use two dies to create this leaf with the stitched center. Okay, so you can use the die, the outline of the die, just to crop out the leaf by itself. And then you can put the um, inside piece in, just like I showed you in the poinsettias, to make this detailed stitching. And they're called the stitched leaves dies. And that's why, because they do this really cool thing. So I cut a leaf out of Blackberry Bliss, Bumblebee, and the Melon Bombo. Okay, so what do we have here? We are going to make a kind of a, this is a card that I actually... Again, I was going through this bucket of things that I save, and I found this template that I had used. Well, maybe I can find it here for you. In a class many, many years ago. It's so old that this is pistachio pudding cardstock that I have, that I used, because we used, our, the card that we made was pistachio pudding. Um, so this is like probably five years old. So anyways, I found this template and I thought, oh my gosh, we're going to make one of these cards. So that's what we're going to do. So we have an eight and a half by five and a half piece of melon mumble cardstock. Easy piece. I have our delightful tag topper punch. We also have a scalloped tag topper punch, which was what was used on this particular card. So you see they have this nice little slot there for the ribbon, the fun little scalloped edge there. And we still sell that punch, but this is a newer punch and I wanted to try it out. So we are going to slide our piece of cardstock now, obviously, this punch is designed to put in, you know, one inch, one and a half, and two inch strips of cardstock to make a tag. No problem. But what we're going to do is we're going to slide the entire piece of cardstock in there all the way to the back. And I'm going to line it up with the edge of the punch right here. Okay, this gray edge of the punch. So I've got that in there. I've lined it up. It's pressed all the way to the back. And that's what we get. So now I'm going to rotate this around. And I'm going to slide it back in. And I want to make sure that I'm on the same side of the cardstock, okay? Because you don't want this piece down here at this end so that they're uh, diagonal from each other. You want them the same. So we flipped it over. We scooted this cardstock all the way to the bottom. Push that over so it's lined up flush with the edge of the punch. And then we're going to punch. And of course, if you want to do these are paper cutter and ruler it all out and everything, you sure can, but that's just not for me. Okay, but now we are going to use a paper cutter to cut and score this thing. So what we want to do is we want to cut off this piece here and this little piece here. So I'm going to bring this over to my trimmer and I'm going to put this little opening here, this little notch. I can see the track of my trimmer in there, okay? And so I'm going to move that just right. So I'm going to bring my blade up and it's got little markings on it. And I can see, um, you probably can't see, but I can see, and if it was your trimmer, you'd be able to see that I'm just going to be able to chop that right off. So I'm going to place that here right at the edge of my cardstock there and push up and get that piece off. Okay. And I'm going to flip that around. I'm going to do the same thing. So I'm going to find that little gusset there in the track and I'm going to do the exact same thing again. Cut that up. Oop, that one I cut a little off, but that is totally fine. And then we'll find that one and cut down. Okay, so this is what we have now. We have this funny piece of cardstock with these two little ends. Well, one of these little ends needs to have a score line on it. So we're going to line this up so that the edge of the cardstock is in the track. I'm going to get my cutting blade out of the way and I'm going to score that. Okay, so that I can fold that over like so. Then the last thing we need to do is this part of the card needs to be four and a quarter inches. Okay, so I'm going to turn this around. I'm going to line up this edge at the four and a quarter mark. I'm going to follow it down here and I'm going to score it again. I had to think in my mind if that was correct. So this half is four and a quarter with the tab folded over and then this piece will fold over this way and then these two tabs just about touch. Okay. Get that out of the way. And clearly, I need to change the blade on my trimmer because we have got some fuzzy edges there. So I'm going to use some scissors here and just kind of snip up and get those little fuzzy edges off. Okay, so that's what we have so far. So our card is now four and a quarter by five and a half. Okay, so then I have a what is this? This is, <coughs> excuse me four and an eighth 
by five and three eighths piece of Blackberry Bliss. Where's my seal? Here we go. So we're going to add that to the inside of the card. Okay, this inside panel here. And I'm a little bit strange and I do this thing where I only line up these three sides, the bottom, the side, and the top. Because if it's off on the inside here, it's not going to matter because it's all pink. And so if you open that up and this happened to be crooked, you'd never notice. But you might notice if it was crooked on these three sides. Okay, so then we have a white piece and we're going to do a tiny bit of stamping on that. So I've got two of the leaf images from the stamp set. I have some Blackberry Bliss ink and some Bumblebee ink. And I also have uh, the Melon Mambo because we've got to stamp a sentiment that is in there too. So in the stamp set, we're using this little leaf here and this leaf here. We're using this, your friendship is something I know I can count on for the inside of the card. And then we're using the, I'm so glad you're in my life for the outside of the card. Ooh, Nina says this plaid paper is one of her faves. Yay, then you should love this card, Nina. Where is my scrap paper that I stamp on? Does anybody see it? Barb, what are you doing? I'm going to just bring in another piece here. Okay, so I want this leaf to be in Bumblebee. So I'm going to ink that up. And just kind of stamp it right here on the edge. And then this guy is going to be in Blackberry Bliss. And he's going to be about like so. So just a tiny little bit just up in the corner. And of course, if it's your card, you can do whatever you want with it. You can put your stamping anywhere. Now I have my sentiments here for the inside. And we're going to ink that up. And the crazy thing about this card is if you put well, the sentiment's not huge, obviously. If it was all the way across the card, then you'd be able to see it. But this little sentiment isn't super wide. So it's going to fit in here just perfectly. Okay, there we go. Oh, Cheryl's asking you guys to give me some thumbs ups. Thank you, Cheryl. <laughs> Cheryl's my cheerleader today. Go, Barb! Go, Barb! All right. So we're going to add that. And then we'll do this. Okay, a little bit of glue there. So now we have the inside done. Then this little space here, I can't remember. So I'm gonna say it again. My Blackberry Bliss is two and a quarter by five and, it's actually it's five and five sixteenths, but I think five and three eighths would work if that's, if you're not into three, if you're not into sixteenths. Some people hate working with sixteenths of an inch and I don't blame them because it can be kind of a pain. Okay, so this is just going to have a little bit of a border here. Then our designer series paper, whoops, not centimeters, I don't roll like that. This is two and one sixteenth by five and three sixteenths. I will try to remember to put these measurements in the description of the video, but I'm actually really terrible at that. So if I don't do it and you guys think about it and you want them, remind me. Or maybe what I'll do is maybe I'll actually put this card on my blog. Sometimes I put these cards on my blog and sometimes I don't. Uh, I just sometimes run out of time um, to do that. But this one I think I might because it's actually going to be really cool. Okay, so we have that done. So I thought the bumblebee ribbon would work perfectly to tie these little pieces together. So we're going to do that. We're going to bring our bumblebee in here. And what the heck, do I have a piece in here? I thought I had a piece already cut. What did I do with it? Well, you know how it is. You think you have something and you've lost it. And yeah, well, whatever. Okay, so we're going to kind of line, make this nice. So I'm going to pull it through the holes and get it so it's nice and flat. And I'm going to start my bow like I would tie my shoe like this. But then I'm going to turn the card. This is kind of crazy, but I really find that my bows look a lot better if I do this. And then I take this piece and then I wrap this end around. If you have your card the other direction, then you would be wrapping it the other way. And the tails are going to go a different direction. So I find that if I do this, let me show you. Oh, this is my piece of ribbon. I was stuck on there. So then my tails are going to come down this way nicely, just the way I like them. Now, of course, a person's going to have to open this. Oh, look at that. I lied. My uh, piece does show. I think it wouldn't have showed if I had moved these up, 
but I didn't, and it is what it is. We're going to just go with it because it's a super cute card, and who cares? Okay, so now I'm going to trim the ends off of this. I'm going to leave them a little bit long, like not super short. Okay, so we can get that away. We're going to bring our leaves back in and our piece of cardstock. This is, I think, three quarters of an inch. Yeah, three quarters of an inch. And we're going to use the Mellow Mambo again, and then we're going to use this where it says, I'm so glad you're in my life. Okay, I'm going to try to center it, make it nice and good. Pam says she makes her bows upside down also. Cool! I find that it, it works really well, honestly, you guys. Okay, so this little guy, we're going to use that same uh, banner punch, but we're going to use, oh, these things are glaring. We're going to use the kind of like arrow um, end this time. So I'm going to slide that in. Make sure it's centered. I think that looks fine. Do the other end. See, now you can tell that's not. That's like cattywampus, but I want to make sure. And if I wasn't looking at it from the bottom, I wouldn't have noticed that. Okay? So I always try to look at my punches from the bottom to make sure that they're right. You know what? I bet I could probably cover that up so you wouldn't be able to see it. <laughs> Tricky, huh, Barb? Okay, so I have all these leaves. And this is the only thing I hadn't quite figured out was how I wanted to go about sticking them on the card. I hadn't quite figured that out, but I think that I'm just going to kind of group them together and call it good. Actually, I might do it. If I did it down here, I could probably get that to cover that up. Let's do that. Okay. So we're going to add this leaf first so we can cover up our sentiment that is peeking out that I didn't think would, but it is. I said I didn't care, but I'm a liar. I do care. Okay, so if I stick my leaf like that, <laughs> tricky, no one's going to see it. Then I'm going to put my sentiment piece on with a couple of dimensionals, and then I'm going to tuck these other leaves underneath. Okay. Isn't this fun? I am loving this. Yeah, this plaid paper is now making me happy. I'm liking it. I didn't really like it before. All right, I'm going to move that up just a bit. Like so? Is that going to look stupid? You're probably going to say, oh, no, it won't look stupid, Barb, but it might. Okay, we're going to... So I'm going to cut out these little stems because they're going to kind of be in my way, I think. I don't want them to show through the bottom. And actually, since I put my dimensionals on there, I'm going to have to cut more off. But that's quite all right. We can just cut off as much as we need to. I wonder if I could sh do one underneath. How would that look? Would that look dumb? What do you guys think? I think I'm going to go for it. I think I am. Okay. You could use dimensionals to pop them up if you want, but I'm not going to do that. So I'm just going to tuck that one underneath. I'm going to take this little guy and tuck it on the bottom. And then the last thing I have to do is to color some rhinestones to make them pink. Because I thought some pink rhinestones would look really fun on this. Okay. So we've got a Melon Mambo Dark Stampin' Blend marker. And I already have some of these colored. I've got three, but I think I'm going to go with five. So I'm going to color two more. And I'm just using the bullet tip. And I'm just very gently kind of going around these little gems. So I'm not trying to tear up the tip of my marker. So I'm just very gently uh, going around there and making them Dark Melon Mambo. But I'm going to bring my Take Your Pick tool in, and we're going to slide these little guys off. And we're just going to kind of randomly place them wherever I think that I might want them. Where else? Down here, maybe? Go with a couple. One there. One there. Ooh, what if it was over here? That's kind of fun, don't you guys think? <gasps> Yay! Then we have our little sentiment inside. I am just, I'm really happy with that now that I <laughs> got that paper out and used it. So there you go. So there's, let me put these things away. Let me bring in the rest of the cards so you can see them all. And while I'm doing that, um, I am going to load this onto YouTube. So if you are on YouTube watching me, please give my video a thumbs up. Subscribe to my channel down here in the corner and click the notification bell so you can be notified when I upload new videos. If you're on Facebook, give it a like, like my page. Place your orders with me at shoppingwithbarb.com. I would appreciate that very much. So here is the card that we actually made today. 
using the poinsettia petals. Now remember, I do have a uh, kit to go with that. It's in the description of the video. Um, this is a card that I had made a couple days ago, or actually last month, I lied. It was last month. This is an inspiration card that I used to create this one here, using, again, the poinsettia petals bundle with our gorgeous red foil sheets. So there's my shopping information. If you guys would order for me, I'd greatly appreciate it. Um, and until next week, I will see you guys later. So have a wonderful week. Bye-bye.